Hey guys, Joshua Depp Tape Channel, and today what we're working on is a 3126 with zero oil pressure, but it's zero oil pressure when cold. After it runs, if it'll start, oil pressure's fine. Interesting. So, I've got a gauge hooked up here, and we'll start it, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to try and start it here. Now, when I first got out to the job site, and you can see I have ET hooked up, it actually started right up and was running, and showed no oil pressure on the gauge and the customer said after it runs for a little bit it'll build oil pressure which if it's not showing any oil pressure though probably shouldn't be running it for very long so this is also the same customer we were working on in the previous video with the iba problems on that c13 but obviously this is a different truck here so we're gonna try and crank it again here and they said the oil pressure problem with the oil dropping in pressure and it being harder to start kind of one at the same time but we go now it's starting and it actually sounds pretty good now what's we weird go. is if you look at the Huey pressure right there and no oil pressure no oil pressure on there so I have a manual gauge we're gonna check that in a second but look at the Huey pressure Huey pressure is good so we have no oil pressure but we have Huey pressure seems weird if you don't know Huey pressure is high pressure engine oil that feeds the injectors to actuate them so does the gauge say we have oil pressure No, it does not. So that is not good. We're going to shut this off. But this answers a question that I've often been asked and people have brought up is, will a Huey engine run without oil pressure? And generally people say, well, no, because it needs oil pressure to feed the Huey pump. This one has zero PSI and it is running. So that is pretty weird. Now, this is a pretty clean engine. But you can see here we're on the intake side of the engine here. You can see the small port that I installed on the oil manifold there. And this is the oil manifold and the oil pressure sensor. With, I have it unplugged right now. It was plugged in before. Don't worry, that wasn't the problem. But what I'm doing here is I'm thinking, okay, well, if it's getting oil to the Huey pump, which is this large line that's running right in front of us here, maybe there's something in this oil manifold that is causing the problem. So what happened is this engine only has about 4,000 miles on it. The customer had just put this in from another truck because the previous truck engine had failed. So what we're doing here is I wanted to pull this manifold off and take a look at it and see maybe something is plugging the oil pressure sensor port. You can see there's oil coming right out of that oil gallery there. So if oil's coming out of there, obviously oil's getting in there. Now that doesn't mean it has oil pressure. Like I said, the customer said as it warms up though, it gets more pressure, which seems kind of weird. I've never had that before. And looking in here, I mean, you can see through there, there is some gunk there in the end of this port not completely sealing it off though maybe there's something else in one of the other ports not really sure so i'm gonna take a couple of these plugs out and see and this is what was there uh, it looks like teflon tape so maybe they were old teflon tape when the pipes plugs had gotten swapped out as you can see they are there's a little bit of junk in there but nothing's plugged i ended up taking all the ports off looking through them and yeah nothing was plugged off so it literally is not getting oil pressure to that oil manifold so i said you know before we do anything else we should probably cut the oil filter open and see that nothing's come apart here before we run this thing so that's what i'm going to do right now so this is a cat oil filter you can tell there's a lot of good things about cat oil filters i usually am a big proponent of them oil and fuel filters not because just because the yellow on the yellow engine looks better they actually are really, really, really good oil filters. Uh, and I've brought it up a lot, but they have the little spiral uh, bands around the pleats. The pleats are glued to separate them. There's a lot of good things about the cat oil filters. I would run them on everything if I could, but especially on a cat engine, generally you want to use a cat oil filter. So what I'm doing here is I'd already used the filter cutter there to cut the filter canister off. And then what we're doing, we're just going to remove a big section of this filter material here and see what the heck's in there. If it's full of metal, then something's come apart. Maybe the oil pump's coming apart. Maybe we've got multiple spun bearings, something like that. Very weird because I've never had an engine with zero oil pressure, but it runs fine normally. That doesn't. Those two things don't usually add up. And I don't want to run it anymore, uh, trying to troubleshoot. If it literally has no oil pressure, you could be doing damage to the engine. 
Now they had, like I said, they they seemed to think, or they didn't seem to think, it was the case that they would start in the morning, it wouldn't show much oil pressure. After running for a couple minutes, though, it would show normal oil pressure, 20, 30, 40 PSI at idle. I didn't want to run it, though, like that, because like I said, if you're not getting oil pressure to the bearings, you could be damaging stuff. And especially on a Huey engine, if you've got little metal particles going throughout the oil system, those could be potentially getting into the injectors, into the Huey pump, and then you're costing thousands and thousands of dollars to fix it. So let's get a big old chunk of this oil filter apart and take a look at it. Now when you do this, you're going to need to squeeze all the oil out in a vise, but before we do that, how about a little destruction of the week? This week's Destruction of the Week, we actually have three of them. The first one is from Guy in the UK, and he said these are two different MX Packard engines, and that's the oil pan off of one. Not, when you see it, not what you want to see in the oil pan, folks. That is the side of the engine there with a little what appears to be a fractured connecting rod coming through the block there. Probably wouldn't want to reuse that uh, fractured rod there. Not sure if it was built fractured or if it got fractured when the uh, engine failed here. There's definitely a fractured rod now. You can see the rod bearing is off of it. And yeah, that, I believe this is a different engine, but man, look at that blue out. Looks like it went through either the camshaft or the starter there. This next one here is from Forrest, and this is a 6NZ. And what you're looking at is a rocker arm where the roller's supposed to be. And he said, yeah, look at the cam. Cam's no good. He said that it started making a really loud popping noise, but the driver decided to drive it 70 miles after that, which inevitably did not do wonders for the camshaft. There's what's left of the bushing for the roller there. Completely fell out. Unfortunately, it damaged the cylinder also possibly due to unburned fuel washing that cylinder down from running it like that without any of the valves opening on that cylinder. So this one's from Jerry, and this is actually a learning process here. So we have a spline shaft here. This is off of a PTO. And they said, hey, it's worn out. Let's replace it. But what it ended up happening is they were trying to disassemble the housing, and they actually broke it. Now, how did they do that? Some of you may know the answer. I didn't, but he said what happened is there's a lip seal here. And the shaft goes through the lip seal, and they were trying to press the shaft through the housing, but what they didn't realize is there's a snap ring behind the lip seal. So if you do have to do a PTO like that, you have to take the lip seal off, then you can get to the snap ring, then it'll assemble, or I should say disassemble, much easier. Unfortunately, they had to learn the hard way. Now let's get back to work. So we got our oil filter element here, and what are we looking at? Well, not a lot of metal. There's only a couple little flakes. Actually, what, mostly what I'm seeing is paint chips here. They are saying, why would there be paint chips? They, he had just assembled this engine, so that's fairly normal. I'd say just as much metal as a normal oil filter, maybe even less. I'm used to seeing more flakes. So there's a couple big flakes there, but nothing unusual here. I would expect to see even more metal than this, especially on a newly assembled engine. Uh, the paint's kind of normal. No signs of damage, very unusual. So what they did is they ended up putting an oil filter back on it and they said, hey, we'll drive it to our shop later if you want to come over. So I went back to my shop and a few hours later went over to their shop. So what I got here, well, this is the oil pan and this truck, the customer had put a new oil filter on it and then they drove it to their shop here, which is only a couple miles from where we were earlier in the day. Shop we're in now pulling this oil pan off is the same shop I was in with the truck with the IVA problems. So they said, what do you think it could be? I, it seems weird. It does not not build an oil pressure. I said, before we do anything else, I think we ought to pull the oil pan and take a look at the oil pump. Maybe something's failed there. Something's going on. Something unusual is going on here. I don't think it'd be an oil bypass valve or anything like that. If that were the case, I think we would see more oil pressure than zero. Something major is going on. I don't think we have a failure though because there's no metal in the oil. If you had multiple spun bearings, anything like that, you'd have a lot of metal in the system. So that's why I went to thinking, hey, maybe it's something with the oil pan. Now, luckily, like I said, this engine had been assembled recently, so it's pretty clean. Gonna get this oil pan off here. And once we have the oil pan off, we're gonna take a look at the oil pump and see what the heck is going on. 
So let's take a look inside the oil pan. Hopefully it doesn't look like the one from the destruction of the week. And yeah, a little bit of residual oil, but I don't see any damaged parts, missing bolts or anything in there. So let's take a look at this oil pump itself. It's still obviously bolted on. I don't see anything broken there. Uh, gear backlash seems pretty normal to me, but one thing doesn't seem normal, and that's the pickup tube. Watch this. <laughs> that sucker is super loose. So if you don't know, that's where the oil gets picked up from inside the oil pan, sent to the engine. So if there's a big gap there, it's going to be pulling air instead of oil. It's going to aerate the oil. That might be our whole problem right there, folks. So what did I do? Well, I took the bolts out, inspected everything. Everything, the O-ring was there. There was nothing else. Bolts looked okay. I torqued them, put them back on, put the oil pan back on. Here she is running. Look at that, 40 PSI. That was a pretty easy one, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.